All right, let's open our Bibles to Luke 18. I want to say a couple things before I read this scripture just to kind of set the, the ground, the stage for it. Um, this church is in existence for a specific reason. We had to ask ourselves 30 years ago, why another church in Grand Junction when there's already a bunch of churches in Grand Junction? We don't want to be a copycat. We definitely don't want to do just what we want to do. We don't want to serve the Lord the way we want to. We want to serve the Lord the way He wants us to serve Him. Because mm -hmm. really, serving the Lord the way you want to is still not full obedience. It's just doing something that you want to do that you think the Lord wants you to do. And you need to check with Him about it, especially ministry and things like that. And so 30-some years ago, about 33 years ago, two years ago, I had to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, why do you want another church in Grand Junction when there's already over 100 churches here? Because I don't want to just do the, the motions. I don't just want to do what somebody else is doing. He says, I want you, and the Lord spoke to us inwardly, just like he speaks to you. He said, I want a church in this valley that emphasizes and teaches people how to receive from him. How to receive. See, because here's the revelation. God can't receive for you. And he can't answer two kinds of prayers. There's two kinds of prayers the Lord cannot answer. One of them is asking God to do something he told you to do. Amen. And number two, he cannot answer the prayer of asking God to give you something that he said he already gave you. And so it's going to take some knowledge of the word to be a good receiver. God can't receive for you. You know, it's kind of like in football. You know, the quarterback can't be the quarterback and the wide receiver at the same time. That don't work, right? The quarterback can't receive for the receiver. And you know, God's throwing the ball, and if you're in the right place, you'll catch it. If you're in the wrong place, you may miss what he threw. If you, not, if you didn't catch the blessing, it doesn't mean the Lord didn't throw it. You might have taken the wrong pattern. If he told you to do this certain play, go to the left, swerve to the right, and then go deep, but you go to the left and keep going left, that's not God not helping and giving you. That's you being in the wrong place to receive what he gave you. It's so much about being positioned and being in the right way. I mean, let's face it. If you're on a certain road, you're going to experience certain things on that road. If you want a hamburger, but you're on a desert road, what are you going to experience? Cactuses and scorpions and snakes. If you want the hamburger, you have to make the right turn when you're supposed to turn because that's, uh, that's what you want. You've got to get on the right road. And even in the area of healing, it, the Lord's uh, clear about that. But I want to share with you something today that I believe will absolutely change your life forever. Now, Donna shared some things about uh, the spiritual part of man and the natural part of man. And I want you to understand, guys, it's not supposed to be hard to receive miracles and healings from the Lord. Right. Why would it be so hard to receive something he died to provide and he wants you to have more than you want to have it? Why would, well, there's reasons and it's not, it's not on God's end. If you're not picking up the radio station, get within range. Right? Don't call the radio station and say, why aren't you broadcasting? Get out of the valley. Right? Yeah. right? Get, get, get where the obstacles aren't between you and the broadcaster. Right. Right. And a lot of people are praying wrong these days. And God can't help them. He wants them helped, but he's not going to violate his word to help us. We got to come according to the word, the instructions he's given us. Right. God is a perfect giver. He don't need prayer. <laughs> Everybody pray, oh, I pray, God, you would do this. Oh, I pray. God's not the one that needs help. <laughs> we need to learn how to receive what he's provided. And this is where a lot of people, they, before the Holy Spirit, before God can help you, the Holy Spirit's going to have to help you ask for the right things. There's a lot of people asking God for things that he can't give them because he's already given them. We need to realize that there's hidden hindrances to receiving from the Lord. There's blocks at times. And if you'll remove those blocks, these things will fall on you. They've already fallen as far as they can. 
And if you'll remove certain things, they'll fall all the way into your life. Now, before we go any farther, well, actually, I'm going to share two scriptures with you, and then we're all going to pray. And we're going to pray a really powerful, life-changing prayer. And if you'll believe that this prayer we're going to pray works for you, your life will never be the same. And you will be a supernatural blessing going somewhere to happen. So look here in Luke 18, in verse 35 through verse 43. And it came to pass that as Jesus was come near unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. It's interesting how this man went from begging to believing, and he got a miracle. He went from begging, gimme, 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 to believing, and he got a miracle. How many of you realize you don't have to beg for something Jesus died to give you? What do you need to do? I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to take it. So now I want to see, there's some revelation here. So hearing the multitude pass by, the blind man asked, what's this commotion about? What's, what's going on? Who, 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 who's, who's here? What's going on? He can't see. And they told him, well, it's Jesus of Nazareth. He's passing by. Now notice. And the blind man cried saying, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. Now, before you go any further, what's he asking for? Mercy. It's in the verse, right? Yeah. He's asking for mercy, which simply means um, help from God that you don't deserve. See, here's th something you need to realize. Healing from blindness, healing from any disease is not reserved for perfect people. It's reserved for people who will have faith in the goodness and mercy of God. That's how you see miracles. We do not earn miracles. We do not earn healings. As a matter of fact, you can't even have a healing from God if you haven't messed up. Because these things are for those who need mercy and grace. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, but it's the way it is. You know how you qualify for the grace of God? Be a sinner. <laughs> Well, you are. You, we were born into this mess. It's not a license to sin. Tell your flesh to shut up. So he cried saying, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked the blind man that he should hold his peace. In other words, they said, shut up, blind man. Shut up, you wild man. Shut up. The master's passing by. Be quiet, you freako. <laughs> How many of you know if you let the persecution of men control you, you will not be a good receiver from the Lord? I'll mark it down right now. If you're going to be a true believer and somebody who's in a position to receive everything the Lord's provided, you're going to look strange and weird and you're going to be persecuted by the world and a lot of church people. Because... I don't know if you realize this or not, but the flesh and the spirit are opposite. And if you're in the spirit and somebody's in the flesh, they ain't going to like you. They're going to call you names and it's going to be a conflict. So this guy's crying out. He heard it was Jesus, must have heard some things about Jesus, realizing he's going around healing people. Son of David, have mercy on me. He cried out for mercy and he got healed. How do we know divine healing is for everybody? Because mercy is for everybody. Do you realize, people, healing belongs to everybody whether they receive it or not? Huh? Healing belongs to... And it's very difficult to receive divine healing if you're too much in this natural realm. And that's what we're going to talk about in just a minute. That's the core of what the Lord wants me to say today. So he's asking, so next verse. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Got the Lord's attention. And when he was come near, Jesus asked him, saying to the blind man, What wilt thou, what do you want that I should do unto you? Stop right here. Is the Lord interested in what you want? Yes. 
I'm going to say it again. Is the Lord interested in what you want? See, some people are never specific in their praying. And they say, you say, well, what are you praying for? Well, nothing in particular. Just, just whatever the Lord wants, and that's what you'll get. Nothing in particular. So just, would you all say this? God cannot receive for me. Now notice, he said, what do you want me, blind man, that I should do unto you? Oh, my goodness. Listen to this, what this man said. You want to talk about a powerful, life-saving, miracle-working prayer? Listen right here. Jesus said, and God's saying to all of us right now, this is like prayer today. The Lord's saying to all of us right now, what do you want me to do for you? Now, as you read the New Testament and after John 19, where Jesus said, it is finished, there's a lot he's already done for us. It is is finished. Are you listening? But now the Lord said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? And, and what did the blind man say? And then the first thing he said is so important. He said, Lord. In other words, what's he saying? He's saying, he's saying, Jesus, I just want you to know before I even ask for anything that, you know, I'm going to do with my sight what you want me to do. You are my, not just my healer, I'm telling you right now, Jesus, I'm going to use my sight for you. Well, if you're going to use your healing to follow the Lord, your faith is going to have a lot easier time receiving what you need from the Lord. I mean, it's one thing to want to be healed so you can watch more TV. <laughs> but it's another thing to be healed because Jesus is your Lord. Hmm? Do you remember when the Lord ministered to Peter's mother-in-law who was sick of a delirious, a great fever came upon her? Luke was a physician. He knew she was out of it. And the Lord rebuked the fever and the fever left her and she arose and played video games. No, I, I misquoted scripture. She arose and ministered to them. She served the Lord. When you want your healing for the reasons God wants you healed, hey, praise God for feeling better. Of course the Lord wants you to feel better. Praise God for the ability to enjoy life on a higher level. But if those are the number one reasons you want miracles and healings, it might take you a while to receive your healing. One of the best things you can do for your receiver is just let Jesus be the Lord of your life. And so he, he said, Lord, He's saying, Jesus, you're my Lord. All right. If you give me this thing that I want, if you give me this thing, I'm going to use it for you. And don't think the Lord's plan is some weird, boring plan. His, fun is more, his plan is more fun for your life than your plan. His plan includes fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. What does your plan include? A little bit of happiness. So listen to this prayer. Lord, this is my request. What do, you, what do I want you to do for me? Lord, I want you to heal me. No, oh, it's not what he prayed. Somehow, this guy got the revelation that the healing power of God was as close to him as it could get without him making a few changes. God has come as close to us as he can come without forcing himself on us. God has come as close to us. The blessings of God have come as close to us as they could without him violating our free will and making us receive. But if you'll make a couple tweaks on your end, the pressure of those promises will find way into your life and you'll see victory and deliverance because you did something. You made an adjustment. Oh, come on. This is a great prayer. Lord, this is what I pray. I pray that I. This is different than saying, Lord, I pray that you. Amen. He said, Lord, I pray that I. Help me do something. See, that's different than saying, God, do this. Oh, God. He said, this is such a powerful prayer. Where'd this blind man get this revelation to pray like this? This is life changing. If you don't think being healed of blindness is life changing, it is. 
What did he pray? Lord, this is what I'm asking. I'm asking that you would help me. I pray that I. Oh, come on. This is a revelation most of the church hasn't seen. Do you know most of the church is praying wrong? So much so that many have given up and now they're more expecting nothing to happen than miracles to happen. He said, Lord, I pray that I. Everybody say I. I. Everybody say I. I. I might receive. Now that's a revelation right there. My sight. Yeah. Did you know that healing has been provided for you? And it's not asking God for something that belongs to him that you can have if it's okay with the Lord. God don't need any healing. He didn't provide healing for himself. He didn't provide miracles for himself. He don't need none. It's yours. Your name's on it. And the more believers realize that these things belong to you, you're going to quit putting up with the thief blocking you from him, and you're going to take what the Lord gave you. Your name's on it. Lord, that I might receive my sight. Lord, that I might receive my sight. Next verse. Jesus said unto him, oh boy. Now, church, he said, receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Now, just look at me for a second. Think about this. The Lord told him to do something. <coughs> so really, now I want to be kind of mellow here and kind of calm on this Sunday morning, but... He actually told the man to do something, and really, this is turning into an obedience issue. What would you do if Jesus walked right through our beautiful blue panels here right now, in a vision, walked in here, stood behind the pulpit, pointed his finger at you, and said, so-and-so, receive your healing. What would you do with those words? Most people think, well, some people just, you know, automatically happen and, you know, who is going to take me over? Why would the Lord tell him to do something if him doing something wasn't vital to receiving this miracle? What would you do if the Lord told you right now, receive your, you fill in the blank. Receive your deliverance, receive your miracle, receive your healing. What would you do? If he told you, what would you do? Hopefully, we would obey him. <laughs> right? This is a spiritual thing. Now, what I'm sharing with you right now may be a little hard for some of you to understand. And I'm going to reveal why that is before we close. But by the time this service is over, you're going to have enough info to do something about these hindrances that have been holding you back from understanding and receiving what already belongs to you. And if you do these things, your life will never be the same. All right, so he said, now he's telling him to receive his sight. He's saying that his faith has saved him and he's still blind. It's amazing what acting like God's word is true will do for you. I said, it's amazing what acting like the scriptures are true will do for you. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. You want to see the next verse? And immediately he received. What? Why does, it, why does it read like that? Why didn't it say immediately God healed? We know it was the Lord behind it. We know the Lord wanted it. We know the Lord, it was the Lord's power. But why is it written? Why did the Holy Spirit inspire Luke to write it like this? And immediately the blind man did something. Enjoying the blessings of God. Everybody say enjoying. enjoying. Enjoying the blessings of God has more to do with us than God. Provision of the blessings has more to do with him, uh, has everything to do with him and nothing to do with us. But the appropriating of them 
has more to do with us than God. And the church needs to wake up and realize you got some receiving power. You got some receiving ability on the inside of you. And it's not about begging God or praying for 29 weeks. It's about getting in the mode of saying, you know what? I believe the scriptures. I receive it into my life. And you start acting like you got it. If you're believing God for financial help, wisdom, help in your business, and you can't even put two pennies together, you need to walk out of your door in the morning like you have a million dollars. You need to walk out of there believing that my God is supplying all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And when you shake hands with somebody, you shake hands like a millionaire. But pastor, I only, got, I only have two pennies. Yeah, we're trying to teach you how to get more than two pennies. Start acting like the word of God's true. Be happy like you got it and you'll get it. Yes. <laughs> I was reading after a secular person one time. You know, people in the secular world tap into God's principles all the time. They just work a lot better for you if you're born again. And this one man said, you know, what you really need to do is just um, decide what you want and then act like you already got it. This is a secular person tapping into the principles of God. He said... You know, just, just decide what you want in life and then act like it's already yours. What's that called? That's called faith. Now, if you connect faith in the Word of God, it works a million times better than just you doing what that secular guy said. But there's a principle there that works. <laughs> what is, there's so many people. They're not going to start thanking God. They're not going to start being happy until things change. That ain't how faith works. You got to be a person of faith now if you're ever going to see things change supernaturally. This man believed. This man received. Now notice, immediately he received his sight. And what did he do? He followed him, glorifying God. And all the people that saw it gave praise unto God. Ephesians 1, please. Now, as you're turning to Ephesians 1, let me tell you the scripture in Luke, uh, excuse me, John 19 and verse 30, when Jesus was dying on the cross, uh, the sacrificial lamb for the sins of all mankind, bearing our sicknesses, carrying our diseases, bearing our sin. When Jesus died on the cross in the book of John, chapter 19, verse 30, he said in his last breath, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. When he received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head because he said a previous verse, I'm thirsty. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Everybody say, it, it is, finished. is finished. What does that mean? A lot more than your brain can comprehend right now. Redemption is complete. The blood has been shed. And as far as Jesus is concerned, when he was dying on the cross, he already saw himself ascending to the Father. Jesus lived. You know, we need, we need to learn to pray like Jesus prayed. You know, you know what he did? He, he's standing at the tomb of Lazarus, right, getting ready to raise him from the dead. L listen to what Jesus prayed. He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He hadn't even ministered to Lazarus yet. He hadn't even risen him. Raised him from the dead yet. There's a lot of things we need to say. You know what? If you've prayed, start thanking God for the answer, even if it hasn't shown up yet. Even if Lazarus hasn't come out of the grave yet, start thanking God that he heard you. Amen. Start praying like Jesus. Father, I thank you that you've heard me and you always hear me. But for these people's sake, I said it that they might believe. And then he called Lazarus forth and he that was dead came forth bound with grave clothes, dead for four days. He's alive, totally free. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. The disciples unwrapped all those clothes and Lazarus was alive from the dead. But did you hear how he prayed? He said, before Lazarus is risen, Jesus said, Father, thank you that you have heard me. Well, there's no change. Uh, Lazarus isn't risen. What do you mean he heard you? He's still dead, Jesus. And they don't get faith at all. After you pray for something that you know God wants you to have, one of the best things you can do is talk like Jesus. Father, I thank you that you heard me. Yeah, but the, the thing is still dead. Yeah, but the business is still dead. Yeah, but the sickness is still in my body. Start thanking God that he heard your prayer and you'll get results like Jesus got. That's John 11, 41. All right, so in Ephesians chapter 1, go on a little journey here with me. 
Ephesians 1, I want you to notice something that Paul is telling the church. This is after Jesus died on a cross, after he rose from the dead, after he ascended to the Father, and after he redeemed mankind from sin, Satan, and all bondage. I want you to, this is a letter to you. This isn't a, a reading that's just for you. This is a letter written specifically to you as a New Testament believer. All right, Ephesians 1, and look at verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 13, 16, and 23. Okay, so let's start right here. All right, Ephesians 1, 3. Church member, Christian, listen, listen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, church, church person, believer, who is going to bless you. Oh, come on. What, what is hath? What is that? That's past tense. This is not a promise. This is a provision. Already yours. What do you do with stuff that's already yours? Beg God to give it. No, how about take it? How about take it? Now, baby Christians are a little different. God's going to meet a baby Christian on the level they're at. But as you begin to grow and develop and realize, hey, the Lord's done some things for me, God's going to require you eventually to start using your taking muscles. Everybody say this. I, I am a good receiver. Okay, now notice, notice. Is he going to bless you? I get a mixed response. Come on, the answer's in the verse. Is he going to bless you? According to this, he has blessed you. Then why do you keep saying, oh, God bless me? We're in the New Testament. Amen. It is finished. Jesus died. He went to hell. He rose from the dead. He ascended to the Father. He's at the right hand of God. And he ever lives to make intercession for the saints. He has done some things. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Come on. Hey, listen, church. It's not, about, it's not about God giving. It's about you entering into what's already there. Don't say, please, church. Stop saying, stop saying, however form you would say this. Don't say this. Don't say this. Jesus, come down from heaven and help me. Don't say, Jesus, come up from the deep and help me. You're not supposed to think like that and you're not supposed to talk like that. You're a New Testament believer. That's like saying, Lord, come down again. You haven't done enough. It is finished. It is finished. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I don't think that's wrong to say that. Before we read the rest of these verses here, go to Romans 10, verse 6. <clears throat> Paul's writing to the church at Rome. He's writing to believers everywhere. Look what he said here. Romans 10 and verse 6. The righteousness which is of faith, talking about believers that are righteous by faith, speaks like this. Okay? Here's what we have to say to you, church. Righteous believers by faith. Here's what we have to say to you. Don't say in your heart or with your mouth. Don't say this. Everybody say, I'm not going to say this. Don't say not in your heart. Come on. This is the word to us. Don't say who's going to ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above. Don't say that. You don't have to say that. He came down, right? He did what he was supposed to do. He redeemed mankind. He delivered us. He set us free. Don't be saying, God, come down. Oh, come down from above. Next verse. Don't say this. Next verse. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Don't say such stuff. But what, what are you supposed to talk like? But what, what does it say? What is the word of God to us? Oh, 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 the word is near you. What word? The word that you thought only God could give you. He's already given it to you. The word is in you, near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Now, don't go any further, but the next couple of verses talk about how to get saved by saying and believing. 
how to actually get born again by saying and believing. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Well, if you can get the greatest miracle by saying and believing, you can get anything by saying and believing. Amen. You can get anything less, healing, deliverance, miracle, because the greatest miracle is being born again. And if you got that by saying and believing, you can get the deliverance by saying and believing. Healing, miracle. Oh, I just, just, I'm just going to pray, and if it happens, it's God's will. And if it doesn't happen, it's not His will. Grow up! No! You can't push all that off on God. Come on, church. I taught for like four weeks on Wednesday night a while back on reasons for a prayer failure. And do you realize you not receiving answer to your prayer does not mean God said no to answering your prayer. It means for one reason or another, you didn't receive. We got to get out of this no fault Christianity zone. Well, if it happens, it's God. If it doesn't happen, then God doesn't want it to happen. Like, like you couldn't improve at all? Like maybe you couldn't learn to pray a little better? Maybe catch the ball a little better? Why do we always put everything off on God? I'll tell you why. Pride. People that have an issue with pride don't want to be told you're doing something wrong. And you know what the Bible says? That's how people go to hell. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. If you can't be corrected, you can't be healed. Because being healed isn't correcting God to do something, it's you getting in line. And really it's getting in line with faith and mercy and grace. So everybody says, I'm not gonna say, Lord, come down and help me. He already done did. <laughs> Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm almost ready to share with you the title of this message. <laughs> Ephesians 1, look at verse 3 again. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Everything in the natural is produced by something spiritual. Healing, deliverance, miracles. We have from God already the core answer to all these problems in our life. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So if you're waiting for blessings, you're not in line with this word. Now, you want them to manifest in your life, but that's different than asking God to give you something he's already given you. Manifestations of blessings is not when God gave them. As a matter of fact, if he hadn't already given them, there'd be no externalization. So what's Paul saying here, right? The first chapter of Ephesians, you have some things, believers, a lot of things. Next verse. According as he's someday going to choose you in him. No, he has chosen you. Next verse. Having, what is that? It's done. It ain't going to happen. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Next verse. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he's going to make us accepted. No. Jesus has done some powerful things already. And Paul's saying, guys, you need to hear this. You're the church of the living God. You're born again believers. You're redeemed by the blood. You got what nobody else on this planet ever had like you have right now. Well, pastor, if I have all these things, how come I'm not enjoying them? That's why you're in church today. Come on, we're getting ready to pray a prayer in closing. It's going to change your life. He has made us accepted in the beloved, right? What verse are we on? Verse 7. In whom we're going to be redeemed, in whom we have redemption. Paul's wanting the church to see you guys got some stuff. This will revolutionize your prayer life. Instead of asking God to give you stuff, you're going to start thanking God that he already has. According to the riches of his grace. Next verse. Wherein he has abounded toward us. Oh God, if you just come closer to me, you just feel so far away. You're going by your feelings. 
This scripture says he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. <laughs> Are you catching this church? You already got some things. Why am I telling you this? So you start receiving what already belongs to you. And quit letting the devil and doubt and fear and all this stuff keep you away. Well, God must have some purpose in his waiting to heal me. Maybe he's waiting for you to receive the healing. You ever think of that? All right, look at verse 13. In whom you also trusted that after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that you have believed, you were, say I were, I were. sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now, look at the prayer. Look at this prayer now, starting in verse 16. So Paul says, all right, to get this thing started, I'm going to pray for you guys. Making mention of you in my prayers, I'm not going to cease to do this. I'm going to do it constantly. What's the prayer? Let's read all the way through the end now. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, now notice, may give unto you what? What? What's Paul praying that the Lord would? Now, this is something you can pray for and should pray for. But what's he saying to pray for? He said, give, Lord, I pray, give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He's praying that they know something. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And know what is the exceeding greatness of his power available to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And he goes on to the end of this verse and talks about the church being the Lord's body. If you are a part of the Lord, then what is his is yours already. Go to Acts 8. All right, as you're turning there to Acts 8, we're going to get ready to pray here, and we're going to receive some help from the Lord. Acts chapter 8. Look at, look at those two scriptures. That I, I think I gave them to you back there, Lucas. Go ahead and just put those scriptures up. Acts 8, 14 through 17. Now, they're having a revival. This is the New Testament church age. They're in Samaria. A bunch of people just got saved. So the apostles from Jerusalem came down, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them, down in Samaria, Peter and John. So, when they were come down, look at this church, Acts 8, 15, what does it say? What does it say? They prayed for them that God might give them the Holy Ghost. Did I misquote scripture again? It didn't say God might give the Holy Ghost. It said, God's not the one that needs prayer. What did they pray, guys, according to this verse? What did they pray? Peter and John prayed for these new believers that they, everybody say they. they. We got to get our prayers correct here. That they might receive the Holy Ghost. For he was yet fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When it comes to receiving blessings from the Lord, when it comes to receiving the Holy Spirit, God's not going to make anything happen. And he's not going to, let me put it this way, he's not going to force anything on you. While you're waiting for God to give, he's waiting for you to receive. This is a huge deal. What'd they pray? They pray that they might receive. Great life-changing prayer that they might receive. What a concept. Lord, I pray you would help me receive that healing. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me revelation. Lord, I pray that you would help me to be a better receiver of what you've already provided. Help me to understand what pastor's saying right now. You need to know some things. Yeah. You, need to, you need to know, and that's why Paul prayed that they would know. Not that they would get, that they would know what they already got. He just mentioned it. You have been redeemed. You have been accepted. You have obtained an inheritance. You have all these spiritual blessings. So now I'm praying that you understand this. Paul preached it, and then he prayed it, and they got it. They started getting it. So I'm preaching it, and we're going to pray it, and we're going to get it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to get it. <laughs> You're going to get it, man. You're going to get it. 
So just take a five minute break. I'm only gonna go a few more minutes, about five or seven more minutes, but stand up with me. We're gonna pray a prayer and then I'm gonna have you sit down for just a few minutes. We'll finish up here. Stand up with me. Let's pray this prayer. We're gonna ask, the, I'm gonna pray the prayer of an Ephesians and then we're gonna ask the Lord to help us to be really, really good receivers. So repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I'm, asking you I'm asking you to give unto me, give unto me the, spirit the Spirit of wisdom and revelation, and revelation in, the of Jesus in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The eyes of my understanding, of my understanding being, enlightened, being enlightened that I may know that I may know, that I may know that I may know, I may know what, is hope what is the hope of your calling, of your calling. That, I know, that I may know what is the riches, is the riches of, the glory of the glory of your inheritance, of your inheritance in, the in the saints that I may know, I may know what, is the what is the exceeding greatness of your power, of your power toward, usward toward usward who believe, who believe. now say this Father I'm asking, I'm asking. Right, along request, right along with this request, like blind Bartimaeus, like, blind Bartimaeus. like, the, Samaritans in Samaria. like the Samaritans in Samaria, help me, help me to, receive to receive better, better from, you. from you. Now, you know the issues in your life, if it's freedom from depression, healing of cancer, uh, a marriage that's fixed, a financial help from the Lord, just you fill in the blank. Say this, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus help, me to help me to receive the things that I need. The things that I need. In, your I in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say this, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, thank you I thank you that you have heard me. You, have heard me. you hear me always. I am, I am becoming a great receiver. A great receiver. Amen. Amen. Woo! I want you to sit down for five more minutes, but before you do, just say hi to somebody and tell them I'm a good receiver. 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 Are you kidding me? I'm like a magnet. Blessings of God come to me quick and fast. I'm a receiver of the miracle power of God. Wisdom to become rich, right? I'm a receiver. I'm a good receiver. Before I let you go, I want to say this to you. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. Can you listen while you're turning? Because what I'm going to say right now is not a filler. Listen, church. The Bible says in Philippians 3, uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to go there. In Philippians 3, it says this. It said that there was a bunch of people who were off and they were headed to destruction because their God was their appetite and they had their mind on earthly things. And all this was causing them to head toward destruction. Um, actually, if you have that Philippians 3, I, I wanted to show it to you out of the NLT version, and then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 2. But look, look at this. See, do y'all realize there's a natural world? And then going around concurrently, there's a spiritual world. Quantum physics isn't all that far off. They just need to get scriptures to prove that what they don't know is real, right? <laughs> now, I'm not into quantum physics, but I do believe there's some interesting things that are now being discovered that there is another world going on concurrent with this world. Do you realize, church, do you realize? Now, the things I'm going to say to you in closing right here are going to do something to your insides, and they're going to put you in a major receiving mode. Do you realize that right now in this room, there's a bunch of angels yeah. occupying the same space and time, but even more interesting, there's no time in that realm. Do you know that the Bible says God inhabits eternity? Do you know what that means? That means he's already been where we're going to be a thousand years from now. He's already there. That's why John could see us before the throne 2,000 years ago, and we ain't even there yet. Right. He saw us there. When he saw the sea of glass before the throne, he's talking about believers that were sparkling. They looked like crystal because of the cleansing of the blood and the power of the anointing. 
He saw us before the throne, and that ain't even happened yet, yet we're already there and have been there for eternity. See, you start getting the, this area of faith and you start thinking about the things of the Spirit, it becomes way easier to receive a miracle. Let me tell you a problem in the earth today, and a lot of church people, not only are they not receiving spiritual help from the Lord, they can't even comprehend it. It's too far, as it blows their natural mind. And this scripture says, Paul said, I've, this is Philippians, New Testament. He says, I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many who conduct whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. Is there more than this life here on earth? Is there more than this life here on earth that we're supposed to be thinking about while we're here on earth? Yes. Absolutely there is. There's a realm of the Spirit. There's the kingdom of God. There's the plan of God. Come on, man. We need to get more aware of the fact that this is not just about what we see, feel, and hear. Life is so much bigger than that. Look at the next couple of verses. But we are citizens of heaven. Not going to be. If you ain't already a citizen before you leave the earth, you ain't going. We're citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we eagerly are waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. You know, when we come to church a lot of times in Faith Heights Church, I don't know about you, but I leave the earth. A lot of times in prayer, I leave the earth. I'm not talking about astral uh, projection. Or, I'm talking about what Paul talked about. When ye are gathered together and my spirit and the power of the Lord, joying, beholding your order in the spirit. Smith Wigglesworth said, a man never got anything from God who prayed on the earth. You've got to penetrate the heavens. God said, come boldly to the throne of grace. That's a real place. While you're on the earth, come boldly to the throne of grace. Obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. Too many people pray on the earth and that's why they don't get much. Your mind can't always be on earthly things and be a great receiver from the Lord. This is why you have to monitor how much TV you watch and how many movies you watch and how many video games you play and how much time you spend on Facebook and all these other social media things. Church, listen. I ask myself constantly, Lord, I ask the Lord, Lord, why did they in the book of Acts and even in the Old Testament have greater miracles than we do today thousands of years later? Shouldn't we be a further than them? And I keep asking, Lord, why did, wh what did they have that we don't have? What did they have that we don't have? We're talking about axe heads floating, red seas parting, right? Dead people rising from the dead, miracles, amazing things. Why? Why? And the Lord said, you're asking the wrong question. The question needs to be, what did they have that you do have? Ooh, you talk about distractions of the age, all this technological advancement. I'm going to talk, church, you need to realize all this technological advancement has not done us as much good as you think it has. It has ripped us off from being more sensitive to the things of the Spirit, more tuned into the things of God. People are more interested about what's going on in their iPhone than the angels that are around them to help them prosper and succeed and do great things for God. There are so many distractions today. They didn't have a ton of what we do have, and they had more miracles than we've ever seen. And it's not supposed to be that way. People have switched from, from being spiritual to carnal. Oh, sure, we've seen some cool inventions, an 81-inch screen TV and, and 8K or whatever it is now, Timothy. Uh, you know, oh, wow, we've got these cameras and these amazing phones. Yeah, and very little miracles and very little healings and very little is being done for the Lord like it's supposed to be done. Amen. And I'm concerned that churches are going too far in this natural, let's gather, let's, 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 let's excite the people, let's show them all the technology. Let's, let's I'm, I'm concerned it's going too far because it's at the expense of some great and mighty things. And if you think God's behind the times, it, let, let me put it this way. If you like everything you're seeing in the world, you're going to love the creator. If you're fat flabbergasted with the creation, you're going to love the creator who gave men brains to even think of this stuff. 
You, you see all this technological advancement. You see how small these hard drives are getting. You can get four terabytes on them and, and all this stuff. And it's like, it's like you, you see the iPhones and the TVs and the laser lights and all this stuff. Wow, electric cars and solar power and all this stuff. And God's going, bare skins and knives, guys. <laughs> Compared to what I have for you, God would never even think about using a computer. <laughs> it's too slow for him, man. It's just way too slow. So, look at this final scripture today in 1 Corinthians 2. I'm, I'm a little excited about this because I know what it's leading to. We have to receive some things in these last days to fulfill the perfect will of God for our life. We have to receive, say, I have to receive, have to receive. Some, things. some things. So, 1 Corinthians 2, in closing... Verse 14. No, I need, the, I need the King James. Could you get that off the screen? There we go. But the bad man receives not. The wicked man receives not. That sinner man receives not. You don't have to be bad, wicked, or a terrible sinner to be a poor receiver. Just be too engulfed in natural things. Yeah. And the enemy, he is so sly. He, he's probably not going to come at you with blatant demonic. He's not going to come at you with wicked and crazy. He's going to come at you with too much natural stuff. So it dulls your spiritual sensitivity and the reality of the things of God and your ability to receive from the Lord. He said, the natural man. Come on, everybody's on guard for the bad. Sometimes you got to be on guard for natural stuff that's not that bad because it dulls you. Yeah. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know what you need to do once in a while? If you want to get into this realm of being a better receiver... You got to sit down and just start thinking. And if somebody's with you, just start thinking and talking about angels and the reality of their ministry to you. Study what the scriptures say about demons. They're in that spirit world. They're defeated. And if people knew it, they could live in victory over it. But if they don't know it, they're always in bondage to these invisible forces. I mean, just, just think about the powers of the world to come. Here, you really want to get in the receiving mode? Anybody have any loved ones that went on to be with the Lord? Or even if you're not sure if they went on to be with the Lord. Anybody? It, it does you good once in a while just to sit down and think about where they are right now. Where are they? A real place. A real place. So real that Paul said, I don't, I don't even know if I was in the body or out of the body. I can't tell. It's like so real. More real, actually. Here's a good question for you. And, and I'm asking you these questions to help you to become more spiritually minded so you become a better receiver. Where are you going to be 80 years from now? Now, some of us, I need to say, where are you going to be 70 years from now? Where are you really going to be 60 years from now? Where are you going to be 50 years from now? You say, well, I might still be alive, but you'll be a lot closer to leaving the earth than you are right now. Yeah. Angels, heaven, hell, the new Jerusalem, powers of the world to come. Where's our loved ones? Where are you going to be? As you start thinking about that realm and about what the scriptures say about these things, it'll pull you into a spiritual zone where you'll be a good receiver of the things of God. Why would it be so weird and far out to receive a miracle for your body when in 80 years from now you're going to be in the glory world? <laughs> why, why would it be so strange to comprehend supernatural forgiveness when there's angels all around you right now? There is powers of the world to come. This is why I personally like praying in tongues a lot. Stand up, church.